Good day. What's up? Hope you're doing amazing. They say that this is Friday Eve. Now, I'm not exactly sure why they say that. Because it's the day before Friday, you know, the day before the most important meal of the week, which I don't really know what that is, but it sounded fun. It sounded like this is going to be amazing. Hope you guys are doing awesome. It's your boy, Zach Miller, episode 4T4 of your favorite show and mine, Zach Miller, La, Zach Miller La 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 Live, the most inspiring show ever in the history of mankind. You know that's true. Thank you guys for being with me today. So I was on the phone with my buddy Tim, and he said, um, you know, my favorite part is like the first few minutes when you like are just talking to talk when you're going to mess up. And I was like, he's like, I hope you don't mess up by hearing that. And here I am. I messed up. Thanks, Tim. Just kidding. What's up here? How about that? Cannot speak today. David, Heather, Ben, hope you're doing well. Ben, hope your father-in-law is doing okay. What's up? Okay, so I have this book of topics. I'm looking at it right next to me. And I was trying to figure out what I was going to talk about. And I, and I have this topic, and I'm like, okay, cool. So now I can write down. Podcast equals transparency is what I have as my note. Episode 44. And <clears throat> what's cool about having a show like this live, having the podcast, is it's a way for you, because you feel like so close to those that are watching, you want to get deeper on kind of the storytelling. You want to get deeper on some of the topics that you want to talk about. And what I think is super cool is I've actually, because of this, recognized that I've been more transparent in some of the stories that I have been telling you guys, some of the experiences that I've gone through. And sometimes you just feel like when you're like, especially on the 1004 show, like you hear someone go through a story and you're like, wow, like. I literally like know what you're going through because I have gone through that specific thing myself. And that doesn't always happen. But then you can really relate to that person and talk about, hey, I've gone through that. What did you when you went through this part of it, what did you do to or how did you get through it? What was something that you did to get through it? Uh, or, you know, go back and forth on some of the topics that you've had. And, and it's, it's really interesting. And so whether it's been on something like, I don't know, hiring, firing, losing money, losing clients, making clients, dealing with things that are painful and struggles. I mean, there's so many, it's just, it's, it's been nice to have a voice. And the, the cool thing is, is that not, and this is something that most people don't get. So just because someone doesn't respond to your post, your blog, your content, your your podcast, your video, whatever, doesn't mean that they don't hear you. Doesn't mean that they don't, they don't see you. And I think this is where people really mess up. And so you can help people from afar and they probably won't even tell you. So probably the first time I ever saw this was like six years ago. There was someone that um, I knew because their cousin worked in TV and he just reached out to me once and said, you really helped me do this. And I was like, wow, like you, you've not commented on a single thing. You've not liked a single post. You haven't told me you're listening. You haven't told me you're consuming. You haven't done any of these things. But what happens is they're afraid, I guess they're shy. They, they, they want to consume, but they don't necessarily know what to do. Um, they, they just don't say anything, but I remember this one day, this guy was like, uh, you've really helped me, you know, improve in my career. And I was like, wow, that's really interesting. So if you're creating content and you, you don't see the results that you want, I don't think that means you should give up on it. I think you have to realize that people are consuming it. Someone yesterday texted me saying, uh, asked me about, you know, understanding how to know that your pain point isn't 
actually the pain point that you think it is. And that was something that this person didn't directly listen in on the content or I couldn't see that they were listening to the content when I was recording it. And they'd never messaged me before, really. Never really had a conversation, or at least not a lot of conversations. And what was interesting is they reached out and said something about it. And I was like, so they're listening, right? And so it's hard for people to reach out and say something back to you because they don't know what to do. An example could be like if you're trying to get a testimonial from someone like, oh, we did really good work for you and I wanted you to tell me how good that um, that process, that product, that service, that work that I've done for you is or how it helped you. And that person who's extremely satisfied with what you've done for them doesn't know what to say, literally. This happens to me all the time. This is kind of a tip in the book where I call it, I don't even know what I call it, but um, it's kind of like seeding the chip. What is it? Seeding the chip tip jar? I think that's what it is. But basically, the concept is this person doesn't know what to say. It's not that they're busy. They just don't know what to say. And so if you can provide the testimony that they already said while working with you, so like they, they give you a quote while you are talking like, oh my God, this was the best experience ever. You did blah, 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 blah for me. And that's like, you helped me increase my sales. You helped me better improve my process, whatever it might be. And what I think some, and, and, and then write that down and then reach back out to that person sometime in the future and say, hey, I would love to use this quote as my testimonial. The same thing is like this content. I know a lot of people are consuming it, right? That doesn't mean that each and every one of those people who are consuming it are going to reach out. It also doesn't mean that every topic that I talk about, people are going to reach out upon. And so it's it's been great that I've been able to be transparent, to reach out to new people, to do daily and, and several times a week live interviews or, or deep dive interviews with people. And what's crazy is that not everyone reaches out. Even when you say, hey, reach out to me, right? Everyone that's listening right now, reach out. Tell me what you think. Hit me up in the comments. Hit me up in the DMs, wherever, right? I would say less than 5% and maybe even less than that actually do that. Oftentimes you have to do that on your own. So what you'll see oftentimes is I will see that someone was on a post, right? So Stanley, I knew Stanley years ago. Where has Stanley been recently? He must be hustling, making some bow ties. So I, I was proactive in the case. I was... I would reach out to Stanley and say, hey, I saw that you were having this convert. You, you were saying these things on the live feed, or I see that you're on the live feed. I wouldn't want to just reach out and say hello. And oftentimes you have to make that first contact. Right? If you want an action to happen, you have to do it. And so by telling these stories with people and then knowing that people are consuming it because you can see some of them, right? Or people that you meet, just reach out and say, hey, like, would love to know if you've ever listened to this. It's really been powerful. And it's a way for me to not only, like, help other people, but, you know, grow the Zach Miller awareness train. <whistles> just came up with that one. Nick, you probably like that one. The Zach Miller awareness train. He's probably like, oh, what a loser. That's, Nick Sutton is my friend, though, and it's okay. So... I, so, so things that are uh, difficult maybe about the show that I don't struggle with, but just things that like, I'm like, okay, what, what can I do this? Choo choo. <laughs> so I have a list of topics at this point. I probably have six or seven left that I want to talk about. I'll tell you what, what some of them are. So, um, and some of them are just like titles, not necessarily like any kind of details or anything like that. So uh, raising your hand, we've talked a lot about that. We did that episode. I should have written that. Um, the co-working fad is almost over. That's something that I think is actually true. Some people have talked about nonprofits and people have asked questions about how to improve their nonprofit. So I have like a nonprofit show, like what can nonprofits do to make money? Um, we're all humans. Age doesn't matter. Things like that. And so... 
while I have these topics, I don't necessarily know, even like minutes before I'm going to go live, what I'm necessarily going to talk about. That is a trait that I'm good at, okay? That is a, tr I think that I'm good at. That is a trait that I can go through and have those conversations because I know what I want to talk about because I think it, but I don't have to be super polished and have this whole outline written down. I can just talk and be like, hello. Some people can do that. Some people cannot. It's not, it's if, if it's difficult for you to do that, then take notes and have an outline and stuff like that. I usually have an outline of some sort of like, here's kind of the three things that I want to talk about today. I don't. Um, so to be transparent or to tell more stories, like someone might ask a question like, okay, um, when you had to cancel your national conference, you know, how did you make that decision? Right. I would have to go and tell that story. I remember I was telling that. Um, that's another thing that's cool about being on other people's podcasts as well as oftentimes they want to hear those stories of, I hate the word failure, uh, those, those low moments and how you got through them, you know, it's how to become, you know, heroic and, you know, storytelling and stuff like that. So, you know, when you're thinking about being transparent, you're often probably worried about telling the world about your mishaps, your challenges, your difficulties. And I get it. Like, it's not necessarily fun, but sometimes by talking it out, it's helping you remedy that painful low moment in your life. And I was having lunch with someone recently and they had gone through something pretty low and we just talked about it. And I think it's just so powerful to talk things through. And so I, you guys know I'm on a big podcast kick right now, not only with producing my own, but also listening but only when I'm swimming. So I was listening to this show, um, that Deanie Dormer who helps us run some of our events told me to listen to it's called art of charm or art of the charm. I've listened to maybe two or three. I'm not like addicted to listening to each one of them. Usually I, when I, so when I find a podcast that I like, I usually go through and it's usually something that's referred to me. This thing has like seven or 800 episodes. It's ridiculous. So I'm not, I'm not going to go through all this. I'm just not. And so uh, they had one with Shaquille O'Neal and I was like, Oh, that's cool. You know, the big Aristotle, let's the, I'm a, that's his nickname or something like that. You know, Superman. I was like, I'm gonna listen to this. And he has something that's really, really interesting. And I can't remember what he calls it, but I think he calls it his forum. In his form, Shaquille O'Neal, the professional basketball player, he has this thing that he calls the form, which is the five people that he like, uh, I guess, trusts the most in his life. And he goes to these people and he asks them for help in certain situations. And I think it's, it's brilliant, right? And so um, people that are like, um, I don't know, like his business manager, maybe his mom, and a few other people. I can't remember who they are. Uh, and it's people that he, when he's going through something, positive or negative, ask for their feedback. And I believe Shaquille O'Neal calls it his form. And so that's his transparency place. And so if there's something that you can get out of this message, it doesn't, I'm not saying go create a podcast so you can be transparent. I'm not saying go create content so you can be transparent. You might not want to do that, right? You might not want to be transparent to the world. To me, I'm, I, I don't really care, right? I feel like if I can help a lot of people by doing it, it's cool and I, it's helpful and it, it makes me feel good and it makes other people learn. And that's great. Hey, Tim. Hey, Joel. Hey, Nick. Hey, Brian. Thanks for being here. And all of you listening that I didn't name. Thank you. I'm super grateful for it. But by finding this transparency thing. And so not only am I transparent with you, but then like, I also have like a group of people that I will go and communicate with. And I think that's so important. Some people might call it a mastermind group or something like that. I would find like these people that are people that you super trust, you know, Shaquille O'Neal calls it his form. And, you know, have these very transparent conversations with them. And it's people, the key to this whole thing is this, these people have, and I mean, absolutely have to give you critical, honest, and oftentimes feedback that you, that is hard to hear. I will relate it to your baby is ugly, right? Or 
you are in a natural disaster and you have got to get out of this. It's what you want to hear or it's what you need to hear. Oftentimes not likely what you want to hear, right? So the book, so here's an example for me. So I gave the book to a handful of people that I trust and respect and uh, to read it and give me their thoughts on it. Some of them have done it. Some of them have not. That's fine. Um, some of them have gone super deep on feedback. Some of them have not. Again, that's fine. I just wanted to get as much feedback as possible. And in the process, I said literally, please do not sugarcoat this. Be abusive. Like, break this down. Crumble it up. Throw it away. Tell me what you honestly think. Where are their hiccups? Where are their issues? And I did that not only because I can take the feedback, but also because when you guys read it, I want it to be a book that's going to help you. Not you to sit there and go, well, I don't understand this. And I think it's so important to have thick skin. Like literally people, I remember one night, Someone, I don't, I don't want to tell this person out because maybe they're going to be mad or sad. They're like, I, are you sure you want this feedback? I said, I did not give you this book for you to be nice to me. And I think it's been hard for that person, which is interesting. If they're listening, they know who they are. And now I've gotten some of the revisions and it's great, solid feedback. It's like amazing feedback. It's like, think about this, move this here, delete this, like, like do a triple axle, do a backflip, do a, you know, a 2000 freestyle swim. Like it's so freaking powerful when you have someone else read it, but I'm, I want them to be transparent. I want them to know exactly what I'm going through. I want, I like, that is so important. And it's been so like, it, it I, I just know so many people would be in the step that I'm in right now. I'm at like 99%. I'm like almost there. And people are like, I don't want to hear that. And that that is what you need to hear. However, I want to say this too. Make sure that people in your form, as Shaquille O'Neal calls it, your group of people, those people that you can be transparent with, the people that you are going to take feedback from, have actually gone through something similar. You probably would not talk to someone about creating a type of business if they've never started a business themselves. They don't know the risk. They don't know anything associated with it. People don't want to hear that. But you have to be getting feedback from someone who has actually lived something pretty similar. I also think you have to try and get feedback from people that are and have gone through that journey in a similar way recently. Right, Getting feedback from someone who has started a business in the 70s and it's now 2018 and did nothing with the internet and you're building an internet business, you can absolutely get information from them and feedback. But you have to make sure that, that person even understands your medium if you're talking about that topic as well. And you can also find experts in these topics as well that you know have lived it. They don't necessarily have to be a business owner at all. So as I reflect on the things that I've been doing, I've recognized that I've been telling a lot of stories. I have been able to get out some of my, my faults, my challenges, my losses and tell them to you guys. And I think it's been very transparent. I think it's been, um, fairly easy, but also I feel like it's helped me. I don't know, like emotionally, mentally, to get some of this stuff out. And I think that whether it's you doing a live show, having a podcast, creating blog posts, getting on medium, doing a video, posting on LinkedIn, Snapchat, whatever it might be, telling people and being transparent with others about some of the wins and losses that you've gone through can be very powerful in helping you achieve the success, the success that you want to in life. And it's something that I've recently observed um, with myself saying, wow, like getting this out has been really nice. And at the end of the day, like this is what like people always say this, like what's the worst that could happen? Well, what is the worst that can happen? A 
couple thousand people like what I said, and then they share it with their networks and say, this guy's, you know, dropping truth bombs. And I help a couple more thousand people like that's pretty freaking powerful. If you guys have questions, feel free to reach out in the comments or hit me up on an email. It's Z-A-C-K at startwithhatch.com. What is that from? I don't remember. So my, my major takeaway for you as you're listening, whether it's you know live in front of me, a recording later in your earbuds on your way on the train in to work on the car ride in whatever it might be think about how you could start opening up and telling people more about what some of the good or bad that you're going through and how by being able to talk it through it really helps mold you into a stronger person now look i'm no therapist right so i don't know what dr phil would think about this i don't really care either but I'm just telling you that for me going through this, it's been very powerful in telling you guys some of the challenges that I've gone through. Some of it live, some of it through my podcast, right? And people, when they respond to you and say, hey, like you said this, that was really helpful for me to get through the scenario that I'm going through. And that's why you tell these stories, right? It's very, it's, it's very cool. Okay, so yesterday, on yesterday's show, we talked about how I downloaded an audio book the Go-Giver Influencer by Bob Berg and his co-author, who I always forget. Sorry, co-author of the book. And I started listening to it after yesterday. I got in, I don't know, 30 minutes of listening yesterday. Um, and then I got in about an hour and 20 minutes of it today. So I'm probably a third through, I would say. It's a four-hour listen. And so there's two things I want to talk about right now. Number one, do you read a book if you listen to it? So do I say that I read this book, The Go-Giver Influencer, or do I say I listened to this book? Because I often, I'm finding myself saying, oh, I read that book, but I didn't read it at all. I don't even own the book. I own the audio file. So do I need to say I, I listened to that book on audio file? It sounds like such a stupid thing, but so many people, like, they'll sit there and they'll change the words around and, and interchange them and say, yeah, I, I read this. Oh, but I was doing it while I was running. Well, clearly you didn't read it. You listened to it. But is it reading a book or is it listening to a book or does it not matter? I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. And number two, so as I, they, they um, so they have two co-authors and they, every chapter is a different person. And so I'm two days into it now. I'll probably finish on Sunday is my guess. I'll probably have four hours worth of swims in by then. It's my guess. I don't know. And it's interesting. So I, it is, it's just so... It, when you're having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with people or a podcast is usually someone speaking in a conversation. Reading is a different way. So what's cool is you have to like really kind of deep dive into the book. And now that I'm a third into it, this specific book, it's really cool to start swimming and kind of thinking about what that person is talking about. And then kind of relating that to your life at the same time. And so, so far it's a book, what seems is about two people that are trying to work together on something, but they're both going through some sort of challenge. Uh, and my guess is at some point they're gonna bring those two together. Um, and so far, so good. So the Go-Giver Influencer, so far, so good. I had Bob Berg on my show a few weeks ago. Um, all you have to do is search Zach Miller Says, and then 1004 Show Bob Berg or just Bob Berg, 1004 show. So that was pretty cool. So, so far, audiobooks while swimming works. I bet it works running. You can consume it. You can listen to it. It seems to work. So just want to give you guys an update on how that's going since we talked about yesterday. So to wrap things up, tomorrow, Five Dice Friday. I don't know what I'm going to talk about. But these are the keys to my rental car. I have a ridiculous. Uh, my Jeep's in the shop. Maybe that's something I'll talk about. I'm going to write this down. Um,
So my Jeep's in the shop. I'll talk about this briefly because I'm going to add this tomorrow. But um, Jeep's in the shop. It has like three weeks left under warranty. And I wanted to make sure there was a problem with it. I want to make sure I got that in under warranty. And I will. Awesome. But I have this four-door Ford F-150. And the thing is a monster. And it's a rental car. It's really interesting. Um, maybe I'll show you a picture. I mean, it's nothing fancy, but it's just this big, big, big truck. And I'm not a truck guy, so it's really interesting. All right, that's it. Episode 44. 44 of Zach Miller Live. It's been fun doing these. Thank you guys for opening, for allowing me to be in your minds, your ears, your eyes, consuming, listening. If I'm helping you or you're going through something and you need help, to get through it, hit me up. If I can't help you, I'll try and guide you to someone who can. Um, but being transparent has been really, really powerful. And, the, and, and it's only been, what, a year and a half that I've been doing this stuff? Zach Miller Live, only a month and a half, two months? It's been very powerful, and uh, it's something that I think can help you guys too. So find some people. Find your, I don't necessarily like this, 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 word find your tribe or as shaquille o'neal calls it your forum find a couple of people that you can really trust and will give you honest feedback criticism to help you achieve what you want in life even if it's the stuff that you don't want to hear um i think that can be powerful so appreciate you guys being here today if you guys are listening i will go and put all the links that i talked about into the show notes so that'll be the art of charm shaquille o'neal they'll also be bob berg's piece and then i guess yesterday's show as well because we talked about that. Appreciate you guys. Always tuning in. Zach Miller Live. Episode 44. Out. What?